why measure implant stability? And you know, like I met, like I just said, it helps us to determine if we're going to do implants as a one or a two stage placement. This is a study that was performed in our group back in 2016, and we found that a cutoff value of 66 showed a 100%, 100% survival with one stage placement if we had this value of 66. This can also help us select implant loading, and in this portion of the study, we found that a cutoff value of 67 was what we were able to utilize for 100% survival when we would early load implants, and so helping us to determine early versus delayed loading. The study really didn't have enough patients in it to look at immediate implant loading, and so we looked both at early and delayed loading. And then this also could look at predicting implant failure. So this study was a little difficult because the implant survival was 98%, and so if your implant survival is very high, obviously there aren't a lot of failures, and so it was difficult to determine the, um, the best number to, to look at when we were going to have failures. So in this study, it was a little bit difficult, but what we did find was that we had higher implant survival when two-stage placement was utilized when the IS Q values were lower than 60. And I think this is very well accepted. If we have implant um, ISQ numbers that are less than 60, these are not ones, definitely not ones that we're going to, to load if they're single implants. And then, of course, this would be evaluated whether we want to do this as a one or two stage placement. And what we found in the study was that this should be done as a two stage placement so that we could get 100% implant survival.